Hello and welcome back to Alison Rushing Crafts. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different. Rather than make a card, I'm going to make a cute little uh, tissue box, traditional looking tissue box for this little packet of tissues that I have here. Um, it's, I've got a template um, that I've created and work into and it looks a little bit complicated but it's nowhere near um, as complicated as it actually looks uh, in all honesty um, and you can see I've worked it out so our tissue box will sit beautifully in the centre and you need very little supplies for these obviously you're going to need a little packet of these tissues and you're going to want a piece of DSP of your choice uh, and that's going to measure 17 centimetres by 17 centimetres now I've on the um, PDF, I'll actually put this onto my blog as a PDF um, for you to download for free uh, and I've worked out all the dimensions that you'll need and you'll notice I've got score lines here um, with the blue, the red are cut lines uh, where you're going to make the cuts um, and then obviously I'm going to show you how to assemble it all. You'll also need a contrasting uh, piece of uh, cardstock to make a little pretty collar to go around the aperture um, of the box where you take your tissues out. So in this case I've just picked a scrap piece of Flirty Flamingo to make that with. Uh, I'm also going to use a um, tiny bit of cellophane and this was just a lunch bag um, that I've taken and just cut to the right dimension so that's going to fit over there so we can take our tissues out of. I'm also going to use the uh, oval dies and it's the third and the fourth die up from the smallest. So if you see I obviously put these in here but if you put them together you can see it's one, two, so that's my third, I'm going to back out, that's my third one, that's my fourth one. I just uh, put them on there because it's easier to use them, so just on a little magnetic sheet. So we're going to need those as well. Okay, so bringing back in our template, um, you can see I've marked score lines in both directions along here so I find it easier just to work with the score lines that are running in one direction only to start with and then go and mark the other one so it does get a little bit confusing so you can either two ways of doing this this is 17 uh, centimeters across same as your paper so if you've printed this out on A4 um, and it is just measure it. If it's 17 centimetres, then you know it's to scale. If not, then you're going to have to use your ruler uh, to mark out uh, the measurements that I've put on there. But in this case, I know this is to scale because um, that fits beautifully in there. So I can actually mark it off directly from here. I'm going to work on these ones that go in this direction first. So the top of this one is going to be at from the, the left hand side is 4 centimetres and the 7.5 centimetres. This one that's going in the same direction is actually one centimetre in from the um, left hand side. So I just need the 4 and the 7.5. So that's the 4, that's the 7.5 and I'm going to mark the 1 just there. And then the same again from this side here we're going to want the four the 7.5 and then the one from the top that's our one Just double check each time we've got a four and then a 7.5 OK, so let's score those first and then we'll come back and do the same for the other side. Turning our paper, this was our four mark. 
match it up there to the other four, making sure you get it nicely in between your lines. And make sure obviously you've got your score blade in. This was your 7.5. Again, make sure you're lining them up. Just move that. And I'm going to score this, although this isn't a score line, it's a cut line. It'll give me the idea of where I need to cut that off. So just me the line. Right, then we're going to turn it. So this is the side we've already done. So now we're going to work on this side. And again, it's going to be the same measurements. So we're looking at the 4, the 7.5 and then the one from the bottom. Four, 7.5 and from the bottom and then we're going to raise it up and obviously the joining score lines are along the bottom here so there's one from that edge four in from here let's just check and then your 7.5 from there. Okay, bring our scoreboard back in. I'm just going to do that little one there again. It is going to be cut off, but it just gives me lines up where I need to snip that off. And then we're going to find the four and the four again. Line those up, centre of your track. And score and 7.5 with the 7.5 line it up and score okay, let's take that away for a minute okay so as you can see as you can see the lines we've got these ones here going straight so now we're going to work on the score lines in this direction so putting your paper back up to it, we're now going to look at the six and the nine and a half. So it's just two on this side. So mark the six and the nine and a half there. And we're lining it up to this side. And we need the six. And the nine and a half so we don't get confused with ourselves I'm going to score that straight away so we've got the six to the six and then the nine and a half Nine and a half. So this is what we have so far. So we just need to do these two now. So let's offer it up again. Um, this time it's the six and the nine and a half down here. We need to mark up. There's the six, there's the nine and a half, and the same again on this side, the six and the nine and a half. It's quite easy to see because this that one's in between there, which was up two centimetres up from each one there. Okay, now final score marks. The six to the six, and the 
one final nine and a half to a nine and a half. And you should now be left with, hopefully you can see, the score lines on there then match our picture. Okay, so moving that out of the way for the moment. What we need to do here is then start looking at our cut marks. I'm going to snip off the one centimetre ones there at the end. So close the snip. And they're then taken off and looking laying it back down you can now see where they are okay now with the cut marks we're going to take two v's out there And same again down here. We're actually going to take out all the little V's all the way around the edge. Okay, as you can see, oh, left two, and these two. Give me a template, it's a good guy to show you what you have and haven't done. There we go, the final one. And if I pop it down, you can see it fits on our template what we've trimmed out. So now we're going to uh, burnish our score lines and this is a nice DSP so it's nice easy to do. All the lines that any I've missed. more cuts to do while well, we've got it out like this you can see I've got the cut lines if I move it in red I've marked the cut lines so this one is going to be this one down to here and then we've got one coming down there to the edge there And the same again on the other side we're going to cut up there and there so see our little box is forming So that's all our scoring and our cutting done. So I'm going to move this away now and we're going to look at cutting out, die cutting out the centre there. So using the third smallest die, I'm going to go from the top because this is the outside of the box. I'm just going to line that up and put a tiny bit of washi tape just to secure it in place and eyeball it 
from where the basic middle is. There's the central point there to there and there to there. Now this is obviously going to be too wide for our die cutting machine but if you tuck in those two pieces you should find that should go through in that direction quite nicely and if you look you're not going to be die cutting cutting off things if you tuck the big ones in it's going to go over it over where the let's tuck it the other way and then you'll see so you'll cut the ends of these off so you want to go in just with these small little flaps here just tuck those under and that will go through your die cutting machine no problem if you've got the standard sort of Sizzix um, Big Shot or the new Stampin' Up Cut and Emboss machine. I'm just going to run that through. Okay. Take the panel out. Okay, remove that squashy. I've got a little piece there to save for another project. I'm going to pop that to one side for a minute. And we're going to make a nice little collar just to go around there to edge it, make it a little bit prettier. And to do that, I'm going to use um, a little bit of Flirty Flamingo. And I'm going to start with the fourth smallest die, fourth one up from the smallest. I'm going to run that through. Okay, and then taking the third one, I'm going to line that up in the centre. Again, a little bit of washy. Run that through. This gives us a delicate little collar to go around there. And again, save that for another project. And then before I stick that on, go that way. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to attach our little piece of cellophane on there. But before I do that, I'm going to fold it in half. Obviously, I cut that to the right size for the box there. I'm going to fold it in half. Look for the centre roughly and Make a snip. And that should be enough. And a little bit more. Just a little bit. It's a bit quite fiddly because it's quite thin. Okay. And then we need to uh, stick that down. I've lost my snare. There we go. And then a little bit of snow, just bring it around the edge, get my snow to work. Obviously we've got the new seal out now, but I haven't got any of that yet. Probably the fiddliest part of it all is actually getting this on. That's been too crinkly. 
obviously you don't have to do this stage if you want to you could just leave it as a standard opening okay. I think that gives it a bit more of an authentic look I actually saw this box online and I really apologise but I can't remember who whose video it was that I watched but I'll try and uh, add that uh, to my blog. That's quite a few years ago that I first saw this done. So I'm just going to take a little bit of Tombow and a little bit around the outside. Out everywhere, get my tissues, and then carefully pop it down. There we go. All right, now all we need to do is start assembling our box. I'm going to want to leave one of these ends open. So that I can uh, pop our tissues in. So I'm going to use a bit of wet glue because I think it sticks better. On these two short flaps that we made there. And then bringing them up, we're going to stick to our box there. Hold them for a minute just to get them to stick. And remember not to pinch in too much, otherwise your, your tissues aren't going to fit inside. This flap is little flap is going to go inside. So I'm just going to put a little line. Of glue on the V, if you can see that, just for this so choose which side you want to come down first and we're going to do that and you might need a loan folder just to reach inside to push up against that till it dries. This is where you can always do with an extra spare pair of hands. Just let that dry for a second. There we go. And then we're going to fold across there. I just took quite enough off of that. And if you find that it's just a little bit tight, this is a little bit tight, so it could have just done with a just a smidge off of this because that's the inside there is touching. So you don't want that because you want the box to go square. If you find that is a problem. So, so now on the edge of this, so not right all to the bottom because obviously. You don't want glue here because you don't want tissue sticking in to it. So go sort of halfway up and across and to there. And then you bring the other side of your box down. Again, using your bone folder to push up just till it dries. Now we're going to take our tissues out of our packet. You can see.
see that they have this little pull up just there. And I'll slide our tissues into our box. And you can either just tuck that in and close your box up so that you can refill it and reuse it. Or you can glue that down and then it's just a, a single use box. And then we'll see. Just pop your hands in a little slot. Oh, it's all glue on my fingers. There you go, you just pull a tissue out each time. And then you've got yourself a very cute little tissue box. I hope you enjoyed that. I'll uh, upload the uh, PDF for making that uh, onto my blog uh, so that you can use it. Uh, it is in metric. Um, I'll try and get that converted as well so that there is a an imperial version uh, for you to use as well. But I hope you've enjoyed that today. I'm um, just making something a little bit different from a cult. I think that's rather cute to keep on on your desk or to give to a friend rather than just have a little tissue packet. Thank you for watching. Bye.